Hi everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Growth Tarot. Thanks for coming again. And uh, I'm Denise, and today I'm using the uh, I'm using Jamie Sawyer's Path Tarot, or I think it's just called Sawyer's Tarot. Uh, I found it on Etsy if you like it. And this reading is for Sunday, May 2nd, uh, 2021. But as always, I'm looking for a message to help help our spirits shine through in the truth, love, power, compassion, courage, love, all that good stuff. Okay, and one more. So we have the Nine of Cups as the theme. So we're in that realm of wishes fulfilled, creating fulfillment. Um, this has everything to do with happiness and and of course, uh, you know, anything that makes you happy. Um, it's a very, very positive card. It's, it's all about abundance. It's all about, you can see the, I love the artwork here, where she's either in a lake or the ocean or whatever. She's in some kind of water. And she loves the way that feels because it's all about being in the flow of your fulfillment and your happiness. So when we're in the flow of our happiness, then from there we can deal with things that are not as much fun. And with, with this being the Six of Cups, but it came through reversed, um, I think it's the Six. This would not, let's see. There's one back here, though. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's Six of Cups. Because, it, I mean, there's two people on the card. It, it looks to me like the Six of Cups. But there's, except for the Major Arcana, we don't have writing on the um, on this deck. Uh, but anyway, it's definitely the Six of Cups. And so this is all about, you know, straight up, it's about reunions and um, coming back to what's familiar well, what else? Let's see. It's, it can be healing. It can be um, being really, you know, happy and kind of, you know, just like carefree, except for um, it does have to do with what's, what we're, what is familiar to us, you know, like what we're used to experiencing, because it is all about, it's a card of the past in the most simplest terms. So our childhood past, uh, past relationships, uh, anything from the past, uh, you know, and especially anything that we loved and cared about. But it came through reversed. So when it comes to reverse, to me, this is a card of healing childhood issues. And uh, no matter, you know, how traumatic they were, um, no, no matter how traumatic the issues were, I, we have to get through them and be, you know, independent before we can find our happiness. Uh, because this card can sometimes have us a little, a little bit stuck in the past. So the key message I'm hearing here, just with these two cards before we get to this one, I, the, the Six of Cups reverse combined with the um, Nine of Cups, I, I hear that, um, what I'm hearing is that, the main message has to do with not having a demand in you know on your on happiness like we have to accept that you know half the time here on earth we might not be very happy it doesn't mean we're going to be really unhappy but when you when you get to a point where you're pretty you know clear of everything from your past what happens is is that even even times that uh, are not very wouldn't wouldn't be happy to other people are kind of just like oh well whatever it's just one of those days I can deal with it it's no big deal um, it doesn't get you down the same way but if we're stuck in the past then you know we just we have to we have to go into it and figure out what's going on to in order to release it so this coming through reverse tells me that there's still some work to um, free the past, you know, to get to the, the happy, the happy pay, place, the fulfilled place. Um, and so basically, again, it, it feels like kind of like the message we had yesterday where 
if we go into our pain, we find our pleasure, you know, at, at the end. You know, it, it, it doesn't feel that way when you're going through it. But it does free up that life force so that the fulfillment and the love can come through. You know, and especially self-love. But when, when we have a demand on life meeting us in a certain way, we have to get inside the fear of it being the other way in order to unhook. I hope that makes sense. So let's say we have a defense around always having to feel strong. Like dare us have a day where we physically don't feel strong. You know, and if we defend against that, uh, what's, what, why? <laughs> it's always why. The question is always why. So to get into the place where we can just flow freely uh, with, our, with our real feelings, because that's what this card is all about, this Nine of Cups. To get there, we have to be willing to go into all the other realms of where we feel kind of, oh my goodness, I don't know, hopeless maybe, or stuck, like stuck in the familiar, the fil familiar, I can't say that word, familiarity. <laughs> I have it in my head and I can't say it. But the familiar past. One of my awesome um, clients used to used to always say, <laughs> "Yeah, it feels familiar in a weird way, you know." And I and I knew what he meant, uh, like you know, he he knew it, but it it was from the past, and and uh, he didn't want it to be that way anymore. i um, but so anyway, going into the past and feeling whatever it is, whether we're feeling weak. Feeling our weakness can help us find our real strength eventually. Uh, feeling any emotional pain will, will free us up eventually to feel much, much more pleasure and happiness. Um, feeling into all the, all the missing uh, love, warmth, security, you know, safety, of course, security, safety, same thing, and being seen and heard and understood, feeling into not having that in your childhood will free it up so that you have it as an adult. Now, it's not going to happen 100% of the time because, again, we have to hold, we have to weigh that, uh, that balance of knowing we're here on earth and we, if we have demands on life, you know, to be just exactly the way we want them, then we're just going to attract more of not having it, <laughs> not having the fulfillment. But this, this just feels like going back into our childhood and, and healing. Like if, we're, if we were lonely when we were little, most kids, most kids go through periods of loneliness, of course. Uh, but feeling the loneliness and going through it puts you in that place where you're there for yourself and then eventually all the, um, all the loneliness is felt and processed through, and then you just don't feel lonely anymore. You know, it just doesn't, because you're there for yourself. And let's say we had siblings that we had trouble with, and um, maybe they, they hated us or we hated them sometimes. You know, of course, not all the time. But maybe we, you know, had sibling issues. And if, if that was the past, we have to go back and heal that. And then, then we come to the place where we finally have that, that ability to really love ourselves and, you know, and them. So, so that's what I see with these two cards combined, you know, looking at it from the deepest, like, spiritual level. So our other bookend here is Temperance. And this card has to do, when it's straight up, it has to do, I see it as the law of mutuality where we're needing to bridge the gap and uh, open up to forces greater than our own. And, and then from there, we create something brand new. But it came through reversed. So I feel like the message there has to do with being patient with ourselves, just needing to be patient I um, I feel like maybe with these two combined together 
with the Six of Cups reversed and the and the um, Temperance card reversed, maybe the childhood uh, issue in the past was just you know the home might have been too busy and too chaotic, and and there was that imbalance. And if that's the case, you know, here we are in the middle and we just want to be in the flow of love and happiness, but then we've got, we've got something else going on that's not so happy and there's too much energy, it's, too, it's just too much for our sensitivities. Because this is a very sensitive card, this Nine of Cups. So that could be one of the deeper issues to heal, is now that we're adults, we can, uh, and, and it's also a good, you know, just to know that, that children need quiet and downtime in order to let their creativity flow through. So if you have little ones or grandkids around you or, or your children or any, any children, just to, just to know that, that that's for them to be in their flow, they do need to have some quiet time, you know, you know, every day. Um, and maybe a lot of quiet time because every child is um, is is unique. But um, yeah, just I'm trying to feel in to see if there's anything else around this. Um, this can be with combining these two again. There, this does bring in that element of sibling rivalry where. You can be kind of competitive, you know, where that competition can come in. And and maybe there were lots of arguments in the home, you know. Uh, and maybe there was even separation, you know, like, like a divorce. Or being, or the children being separated from one parent for a long time. It, it can be that. But anyway, the key here is this middle card. This is the key, and the key is just, just like I said, leading up to this is everything to do with feeling your feelings. Just getting inside whatever the feelings were from the past, and that's the only way through. The only way out is through. So, okay, let me use, um, hold on these up here in case I need them again. Use this other deck. Let's see if I can get it straight up. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's actually this one here. If you can even see, it's called oh, wait, uh, Threads of Fate. The Lumen Edition. Yeah. So let's use this oracle and see... Let's see if there's something else. Yeah, they still don't spread quite well. Getting better. I found, I discovered if you leave them out in the air, you know, like, so I had them laid out all around my living room for a couple of days. A little better, but... Uh, other than that, you have to use like fanning powder, you know, card fanning powder, and it's a big mess. I, hate, I don't want to go through it again. Done it enough with my decks, and I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> okay, this card right here. And this one, and I'll hold them up so you can see the image. Okay, so the theme again, the revolutionary. Yeah, so... I feel like it's more about evolution, our evolving soul, our evolving soul that has to clear, clear out in order to let this pure spirit shine through. Let's look at that flame there. And it, it gives me, I'm reminded of that, you know, that energy of like blazing your own trail, that we all, we all have our unique path. So to honor that. And then this card here, oh, it looks like it's a, a hemp leaf or, you know, yeah, pot plant. <laughs> and and it's versatility. Yeah, just like hemp is, can be used for so many different things. It can make ropes, brooms, clothes, many things that I'm sure I'm not thinking of. 
Um, but yeah, versatility. So the versatility of, I guess, our resiliency is what I just heard. The way that we can be, um, well, no, wait. I just heard this could be part of the issue with the, the past and the childhood where we tried to be, we tried to adapt. We tried to be very versatile for our, our parents so that we could get our real needs met. And that may be part of the pain. Like that place where, oh, sorry, I could tell my ceiling fan is like making, there, okay. Um, the reflection was going around in circles. Anyway, so so if we're if we try to adapt too much to what our parents needed or or we thought they needed, whatever we perceived they needed, then it can be challenging because you know we could go quiet about what we really needed and our parents maybe didn't really know. You know, maybe they didn't really know. I um, and then this last card here has to do with, it's called the Underworld card. So that, that of course, has to do with our shadow. It looks like there's a little, like some handcuffs, kind of. It, it looks like thorns around, like hands tied together. So this would be where we could be trapped in our unconscious ways of the past that just need to be healed. And, and I don't mean unconscious in a bad way. I just mean... Uh, like something that we haven't been able to fully recognize yet. And all that needs to happen is for us to be aware of where we, where we, where we got caught up in creating our own little self-created prison. You know, like, were you quiet all the time? because you thought that's what your parents needed? Or did you try to, or one of your parents at least, or even a caretaker, could have been a grandparent, or an, or an aunt, or an uncle, whoever, whoever meant a lot to you. Um, did you morph into, did you like morph into what, what you thought they needed you to be? I always go back to that, that, that you know, mantra that I, made for myself when I was healing, I, I would ask myself when things were going wrong in relationships or, or within myself within relationship, <laughs> I would ask myself, well, in this situation, who do I think I need to be in order to get their love or their approval? And that just opens up the world of, of the, you know, the childhood pain. And then, and then once you once you figure out like where you were trying to be so darn versatile so that you could get that connection that's a real need, um, then then you can you can answer that question and you can stop doing it because it's it's not going to get you anywhere. You know, if we have a forcing current going out, a demand going out in our relationships, it's going to cause us the opposite of what we really want. So if we're afraid of being rejected, we might reject ourselves and we might go into withdrawal and they won't know where we are, what's going on inside of us, and or, or we might reject them first. Well, you're not going to get the connection that you want. You know, if you, if you have this fear of rejection and you go into withdrawal, you're just going to get more rejection. Or if you have a fear of not being in control and you come off controlling in relationships, that's going to push people away too. It might hook them in for a while, especially if you have people, uh, if you've been in relationships where you, you can see it, where like one person just wants the connection at any price kind of thing and, and the other one doesn't mind controlling. And there's a hook for a while, or, you know, like a connection, but it's it's not free and clear, so it will cause problems later on. And then other times, well, and this would go with, like, if, let's say if somebody's controlling and the other one is submissive, well, there you go, that's a hook, but is that healthy? No, I don't think so. And then there's passive aggression, 
which is still aggression, which is still controlling. It's just not honest. At least in the covert control, you know where they are. In overt, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not covert control. In overt control, covert would be the passive aggressive, which is dishonest. But the covert control, at least you know where they're coming from. That's more honest, actually. So, 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 so there you have it. <laughs> and we're at about 20 minutes here, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up for now. And in summary, I, I think the, the answer really is just to get in touch with our wounding and, you know, work it through. Be willing to look for what's unconsciously controlling us. And, uh, and that's how we get through and free it up. And just remember, yeah, the only way out is through. We have to go in and through. It's always an inside job. So, okay, well, that's it, you guys. Take care. Bye.